know it's bad whenever the vendor themselves is saying, don't use the product, this exploit is bad. Yet another zero day has dropped. Unfortunately, this one is so bad that we don't even have the technical details for it and there is no patch. The worst part is that it appears that there is no version safe from this exploit. It doesn't matter if you're a secret subscriber to the security through antiquity model, you're still vulnerable. Unless, mm, stay tuned. Let's talk about this new vulnerability that was discovered targeting Alassian Confluence instances or CVE 20222-26134. And unfortunately, this doesn't have a name yet either. We're gonna talk about what we currently know at least at the time of recording this video and how it was discovered because really that matters. We're also gonna talk about what you can do to protect yourself. Surprisingly, it may not be hard, but it may be incredibly painful. So let's talk about this exploit. Atlassian dropped an alert on June 2nd in the evening time notifying customers that this vulnerability had been discovered. This isn't the first zero day to target Confluence. In fact, back in September of 2021, zero day had been targeting Confluence and it caused a huge uproar within cybersecurity. That vulnerability led to remote code execution as well. But that said, this zero day may be much worse than that one. Again, as of the time of recording this video, we don't have a ton of details yet. I'm really just making this video to get the notification out to you that this is a thing that's going on and kind of provide the details that we know right now. The main reason that a lot of those details aren't being published right now is because there is no patch yet. So really a lot of the publication from Atlassian and some other cybersecurity firms talking about this exploit is really just to notify firms that they need to implement some of the fixes right now to be able to mitigate some of the attacks that are going on right now and to stay tuned for a patch. But they're not gonna provide more technical details because they don't want a proliferation of proofs of concept or more technical reverse engineering to go in so that way more threat actors can exploit this. All of that is to say that if you wanna protect yourself, you're gonna to have to take matters into your own hands, at least for now. We do know that Alessian is trying to get a patch out by the end of June 3rd. So if you're watching this video, there is likely a patch already available. However, let's talk about the details of this exploit, at least what we know, because it sounds pretty bad. Basically what we know is that this is a command injection vulnerability that leads to unauthenticated remote code execution. That is to say that whenever an attacker passes a command string into a specific input field, they're able to get output and they don't have to authenticate to a specific user. They can do so as an unauthenticated user and that can allow them to get everything from a remote shell to be able to upload malware. Now, the next part is what really caught my eye. Initially, at least, Atlassian said that no version of Confluence is safe from this vulnerability, which is really concerning because if you're a subscriber to the security through antiquity model, then you might think that if you maintain stone age versions of different products, then you won't have to worry about new exploits simply because they can't run on your infrastructure. And while that might be true, you're also vulnerable to very old exploits exploits, but I digress. Unfortunately, it seems that that model might actually not work in this context either because it appears that all versions of Confluence are vulnerable, or at least all the way back to Confluence version 1.3.5, which was released back in 2013. So if you've installed an update into Confluence anytime since 2013, you're more than likely vulnerable to this exploit. And if you haven't, drop a comment below because I'm so curious why. Again, that being said, Atlassian has pledged to roll out a patch by the end of June 3rd. So again, if you are running Confluence, check for the patch. And with the patch, we'll likely include more technical details about this and we'll probably follow this video up with more information as we hear about it. But with those details come proofs of concept, which means that there will, will be wider exploitation. Now, a huge problem right now is that a lot of folks are running Confluence and it is exposed to the internet. Personally, I'm not exactly sure why you would want Confluence exposed to the internet, but I'm sure that there are legitimate business cases to do so. But if you are doing so, that's really how attackers are able to exploit this and gain access into your environment. But even if you are keeping it internal, if an attacker already has access into your environment, this is a great way for them to pivot and to gain further control over your network. So don't think that you're out of the woods just because you're not exposed to the internet. Also, don't think that you should not hit the like button because you absolutely should. Doing so helps this channel grow and it raises more awareness about this exploit. So with all that being said, how exactly did this exploit get discovered? Believe it or not, it was actually Actually, during Memorial Day weekend, during an investigation of another breach of an organization. Velexity, a cybersecurity firm that does some incident response work, basically was digging into 
how a breach occurred in a particular client and they discovered that the threat group, which is believed to be from China, had utilized this exploit to gain access to their Confluence servers where they were able to upload back doors. This gave them not only remote access, but allowed them to pivot throughout the environment afterward. And they also did so in memory, meaning that it was low level enough that the detections in place for that organization weren't able to pick up the execution and upload of this exploit, at least in the moment. So this is all pretty bad, but how exactly can you protect yourself? I mean, if there's no patch, at least for right now, what are you gonna do? Well, first off, if you're watching this, again, the patch is probably out if it's after June 3rd. So first off, just implement the patch. But second off, if either you can't implement the patch or it isn't out yet, or the patch doesn't work, which has happened before in the past, then make sure that your Confluence instance is not internet facing. As Velexity shared in their analysis, the victim had exposed their Confluence instance to the internet. And as Shodan shows, there's over 11,000 instances exposed to the internet right now. And as happens in previous exploits, attackers tend to gain proof of concepts for these exploits, especially whenever there's a wide attack surface like this. And then they begin to just spray and pray. They will first scan for vulnerable hosts on the internet, and then they will utilize proofs of concept to basically see how many Confluence instances they can gain access to. With that access, they will do a number of things. Either they will sell that access on the dark web, they will upload crypto mining malware, or they can upload other malware like ransomware, or just sit on it and use it for other purposes. Either Way, it's all bad and you don't want that to happen so make sure that it's not internet facing. As Atlassian points out another thing that you can do is simply just turn it off. Just turn off Confluence which you know it's bad whenever the vendor themselves is saying don't use the product this exploit is bad. Third ensure that there is sufficient monitoring and logging and I know that this is really not necessarily a solution in and of itself it's more of an insurance in case something has already happened that you're able to monitor and see that but you need to do it. There's already a lot of research being published online, especially on cybersecurity Twitter, where people are sharing detections that they are discovering is helpful in finding actions in Confluence. So definitely try to get some indicators loaded up, get some detection rolling, and try to identify any suspicious behavior in Confluence or in your Confluence instance. But this is really something that you should be doing 24 seven, especially while you're trying to find either the patch or a more permanent solution for your Confluence instance. There's so much to this exploit that we don't know. Again, we don't have more technical details. We don't have proofs of concept yet. We don't have fallout yet. And this is all in light of the MSDT vulnerability or Felina. So as more information comes out, we will be trying to cover that on the channel. And if you want more information on Felina, because that is a can of worms in and of itself, check this video out. But also be sure to hit that like button because it does help this channel grow and it helps push this video out to new audiences so we can raise awareness and hit that subscribe button. I'm posting more fairly frequently. With all that, I'll see you all next time. Bye.